Hello, my name is Jessie, and today I'm going to give you an introduction of Aspen Discovery. Aspen is a fully featured discovery system that integrates your e-content and other third-party providers, giving your patrons comprehensive access to all your materials in one place. So let's take a tour. Aspen can be customized to match your look and feel of your library, incorporate your logo, and other things that tie in your library's look. You can highlight certain lists or New York Times bestseller lists on your front page. There's a New York Times bestseller API that brings the lists automatically into your library system. So now when your user clicks on one of those lists, they'll be able to see the titles that are available in your system. From the home page, your user can also see a list that your library decides to highlight. In our case, you can see titles for new fiction and others just by scrolling down the page. Your user has the option of looking at either covers or in a grid. Now let's talk a little bit about search in Aspen Discovery. When your user does a search, it will bring back the most relevant results in the system. You'll notice here that it also provides a list of titles that match in the system, so they can select from that list as well. When the results come back, you'll have your facets over here on the left-hand side. When you're setting up your facets, you have a between 30 and 40 facets that your users can choose from. If I'm looking for e-content, you'll notice that I can just select that, it will expand, and then allow me, of course, to drill down by OverDrive or Cloud Library. Over on the right hand side, you'll see that the user also has the option to look at visuals. So they could hit that ebook and then it will bring back options for just ebooks in the system. Of course, they can search the entire collection, what's available now, and then also what's available online. As I scroll through, you'll be able to see the options for those particular titles. So now I can see if it's available online for a different provider either Cloud Library, OverDrive, Hoopla, recorded books, or other formats. As I scroll through, again we can see additional information about those titles. Your user will be presented with options to look at more information, which will take them into a detailed view of the record. Here you'll be able to see things like ratings, additional information like language, accelerated reader, and formats. As I scroll down, the user will be able to see the description of that particular title. More like this, which is the recommendations from Aspen Discovery for similar titles. And then of course down below they'll be able to see things like the subjects. More details. Similar titles from Novelist. So if your library is a Novelist Select subscriber, you'll be able to see the integration along with other authors from Novelist. You can tie in reviews from Goodreads, and then of course a staff view below, which would give you mark information. Now, as I scroll up, let's do another search. Now let's maybe look for some series information. So if I was looking for the Outlier Trilogy, this will bring back a list of results that match my search. Here you'll be able to see a quick look at each one of those records, and if I know I'm looking for the Outliers Trilogy, I can click on that series information. That will then take me back where I can see those uh, three matches for the titles in that series. And of course if I click on one of those titles again, it will take me in where I can see items also in this series. Let's talk about spelling. You know how often some of our users will come in, they'll do a search in the system, um, whether they're looking for a title and they type too fast, or they're just not sure of how something is spelled in the system. Aspen will fix the spelling error for them and bring back a list of results. So here you can see I spelled Chronicles with an A rather with an E. Aspen fixes it for me and shows the results for Chronicles of Narnia. You'll notice right below though it does give them that option of what they did search for with the incorrect spelling. Now as I scroll through I can see those options um, for the 
particular title that I'm looking for. Now let's log into the system. When the user is prompted to log in, this allows them to enter in either their barcode or username followed with their password or PIN. Once they are logged into the system, it will take them into their account information where they can see titles that they have physically checked out, um, any if they had them checked out with RB Digital or Cloud Library as well. So when I click on those checked out titles, I'll be able to see the items that I have checked out in the library, the due date, and any additional information. You've been seeing these stars around both the title uh, and again here in our items that are checked out. This allows the user to rate the particular item that they've read. Once it's rated in the system, Aspen will start providing recommendations based on reviews and ratings in the system. The user has the choice to look at reading history. Of course, this is all dependent on what is set up in your system. If you anonymize or you allow the user to choose, they can, of course, stop recording the reading history if they have that option. Then that will show them uh, no reading history. And if it is uh, turned on, then, of course, they can choose to record their reading history, which will give them uh, just a look at what they've checked out in the system. Under their fines and messages, they'll be able to see anything that they owe. Right now, I owe a total of 25 cents. You have the ability to integrate PayPal, PayPal credit, and the use of debit or credit card. So the user can click right away and go into that particular payment option and make a payment to the library. Materials requests. This ties into purchase suggestions that your user has made in the system. If you allow purchase suggestions, the user can see when the item was suggested and when it's available. They can also submit a new material request by clicking on the link and that will give them a form that allows them to fill it out. I'm going to jump back to my account and look at some of the other options that we have. Here, you'll also see titles that you've rated. So if you do use the rating system, you can see those items here that have been rated um, and what you've rated them. Then you now have something called recommended for you. This will take the ratings that I have made in the system and give me recommendations based on those. So now your users have something new to check out. And of course, then the last things we have here are account settings. And these, of course, are set up so your user can come in and see their preferences, things where they may want to pick up holds in the system, contact information, such as their um, emails and phone numbers, their messaging settings, what messages they will receive um, in the system, how would they like to receive them, SMS, email, and then linked accounts. This is an option that your library can choose to turn on or off, but this allows you to link to an account. So perhaps it's your partner or a guardian or your child. And this will appear and you'll be able to view checkouts and holds in the main account. Now one thing we can go into a little detail about is holds. When your user places a hold in the system, they'll be able to come in and view all of the holds, whether they're ready for pickup or anything that is pending in the system. So here you can see it will show them right away the position that they're in. Um, and then if there's any um, above one, so I can see there's one other person ahead of me on this one, um, they'll be able to see that information in the system. They'll also be able to see it and have a breakdown for physical material. If they have any holds on their RB Digital or Cloud Library, they'll be able to see that information as well. They can cancel holds or freeze holds or suspend, as we might call them, at any time. So, for example, if I no longer want that runner's world, I can hit that cancel and then that will successfully cancel the hold in the system. I can also freeze it um, and then you can select a date when you want that uh, frozen hold to be thawed. Okay, and you have a pop-up. Now let's do a search for e-content in the system. So let's do a search for baseball. That will bring back results in the system and I'm going to select e-content over here on the 
left hand side. Let's just check out what we have available via Cloud Library. So now as I scroll through, again, I can come over here, click Check Out via Cloud Library. It will let me know that our title has been successfully checked out. I can click on View My Checkouts, and now I'll be able to see that information. So here you'll see I have a few other items that are, are checked out via Cloud Library. I can see that information. I can also see my RB Digital checkouts. Uh, this will give me a breakdown of that information as well. So depending on what your library has access to, you'll be able to see that information in the system. Okay, I'm going to come back to the beginning again. And now let's talk a little bit about um, some of the options you have with integration for um, either open archives, uh, lists, or your website. So let's say you have meeting room options available on your website. This allows your staff to connect that option into Aspen Discovery. So when the user is scrolling through, they'll be able to see an option that shows up and says explore more. So for example, I can come down and see which meeting rooms and spaces are available. Once the user clicks on this, this will take them out to another screen where they can come in and reserve a room in the system. You also have options to add in what we refer to as placards. Placards allow you to highlight certain things in your system. Let's talk about Freegal, for example. So if I come in and I do a search for music, just to see what my library has available, this will bring back a list of results. So you can see as I scroll through, I can see some options there. But it will also give me a pop-up letting me know, hi, am I looking for music? Don't forget, you can check out Freegal. And this will take me right into my Freegal account so I can highlight certain products that I subscribe to so my patrons know that we have access to them. Sometimes it's hard to find those inf the information because it's tied in on the website somewhere and your user doesn't know um, exactly what they have access to. So this is a great way to highlight some of that information. My name is Jesse, and this is a production of Bywater Solutions. If you have any questions or are looking for more information, please visit bywatersolutions.com.